what I'd like to turn to just as we uh, get kind of wrap up is what is your protocol? And, and I saw you were wearing a continuous glucose monitor. And so do you wear that all the time? I mean, do you continue to learn things from it after having worn one for a number of years? You know, amazingly, I do. And so I will, I don't wear it all the time, but I do go on and off of it. Uh, and, you know, my glucose is a little bit of the bane of my existence. I can, you know, I can fast and it's too high. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, in me, it's not so much diet because I've got my diet pretty well dialed in. I eat a very high protein diet. I eat a relatively low carb diet, eat a lot of fiber. Uh, so my diet's pretty dialed in and I can know exactly what's, you know, what's going to happen with my diet. What I'm working on a little bit more with the CGM is, is how other things are influencing it. Because for me, it seems like a lot of behaviors or stress, things I do at work really impact that. And so what I've been working with it still is trying to figure that out. Do things, you know, does using, for instance, right now, one of my experiments I'm doing is I'm using a vagus nerve stimulator. So we know that our vagus nerve, big nerve that runs from our gut to our brain, is a regulator of stress. And that those of us who are always kind of running a little high sympathetic, you know, sort of type A mode are victims of being overly sympathetic. Those of you guys who wear an aura ring and measure your heart rate variability, that's what that's mm -hmm. doing. That's your sympathetic versus parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic yeah. nervous systems are relax, calm down. Sympathetic is are there's a tiger chasing us, fire up. If your HRV is high at mm -hmm. night when you're sleeping, that's a good thing. It means you're getting out of that tiger chasing you mode. You're able to relax, get good rest. Your, your, your brain's going to function better. If your HIV is low, it means you're running on sympathetic tone. So I find that my glucose parallels that a lot too, that, that my stress during my day impacts my glucose. It'll shoot up to 120. And, and just because I eat nothing, just because something is stressing me. So I'm working now with those kind of tools. So I think that's where you, know, you can do these little experiments on yourself. And the CGM is such a nice instant message, but HIV is too. So I mm. love people who measure heart rate variability because yeah. you can take, do something, right? Right, because you can do something that night and see how it impacts it, right? So you say, okay, I'm going to try eating this food at eight o'clock. And did my HRV impact by that? Because it, it's a relatively rapid outcome you know, most mm -hmm. things we do takes a while to see results, but HRV not. You can modify that pretty dramatically with, you know, oh, I took this supplement. My HRV went up 10 points. And CGM is kind of the same thing. You see that your glucose is, is, is spiking up during the day. What did I do and what can I do to change it? So right now I'm working with, I have a little device. It's a little electrical stimulation. So the vagus nerve runs kind of through from gut to our brain stem. It innervates every organ and you can stimulate it right here in the neck, right? Where your pulse is in your neck, you can actually use a little electric stimulation. If you stimulate the vagus nerve, it turns off the sympathetic nervous system so that you are running more in a parasympathetic or calm state. Right now, what I'm experimenting with is seeing if I can control my glucose a little bit better during the day by using a little vagus nerve stimulator. So they're kind of fun for doing experiments like that. Now, those of you who have never worn one, it's a great thing just to figure out, for instance, okay, I'm going to, I, I, I really love my, uh, you know, my what, whatever, a little dessert thing, right? What if I eat, you know, I put chia seeds on it. So there's some fiber in it. Does that impact my glucose a whole lot, right? Or for instance, the sweetener, trailose. Trailose is a non-glycemic sweetener. If you use trailose along with something that maybe would spike your glucose, it'll keep the glucose spike from happening. So, so, so much you can learn from these things that give us instant data. And that's why I like using the CGM. And I'll just do it periodically for experiments, basically. You know, and, and the same thing's true with you guys with your HRV. You mm -hmm. can take spermidine at night and say, oh, look, my HRV actually went up 10 points. Uh, you know, or eat, don't or don't eat dinner and see, or eat super high protein at five o'clock. And that, and those are those are really good pieces of information to have because if that those things are having that impact, you know they're working for you. About 75% of people are magnesium deficient. In fact, magnesium is involved in more than 300 chemical processes inside your body. So a lot of different things can start to go wrong if you are deficient, such as trouble sleeping, low energy, irritability, and anxiety. 
To avoid being deficient, you can supplement daily with magnesium and experience a number of positive health benefits like better sleep, more energy, stronger bones, healthier blood pressure, and a calmer, more stable mood. To ensure that we have sufficient magnesium, my wife and I take Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers. Magnesium Breakthrough has the full spectrum of all seven types of magnesium. One of the important reasons we chose it is it's made with all natural ingredients, soy-free, gluten-free, lactose-free, non-GMO, and free of chemicals and fillers. Visit magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern and use the code modern10 to get your magnesium breakthrough with a 10% discount. Thank you for your support. Speaking of protein, what, what do you do to get your the amount of protein you need? Because I, I, I believe you do a fair amount of workout as well, yeah. you know, like lifting weights. And so, yeah, how do you get the protein? So protein's hard. And yeah, it's funny. I have these, you know, older women who, uh, you know, when I try and tell them they need 150 grams of protein, like, oh my God, there's no way I can eat that. And, and you can, but you really do have to focus on, on you know, protein first, that that's going to be, you know, your focus. Cause if, if you, if you eat carbs and you're trying to get the protein and you're never going to be, you're going to be too full, you're not going to, so you got to go protein first. It's priority is a protein priority diet. So I start, it's been shown that ideally if you're really well-trained, probably timing a protein doesn't matter that much, but for most people getting a good protein load in about two hours after their workout. So I work out early in the morning and then I have within a few hours, I have a protein shake that has about 50 grams of protein. So it's a whey protein. Whey proteins are great because they have, you know, most of your amino acids all there. Then I add some phospholipids because phospholipids are really helpful for the cell membrane. So I add some phospholipids to it. I add some creatine to it. Creatine is important for muscle building, but it's also important for the methyl transferase system in our cells. So I add five grams of creatine to that shake. I add a little alpha ketoglutarate, which helps mitochondrial function. So I have this, you know, whey protein with alpha ketoglutarate with phospholipids. And then I actually add a another sort of supplement, powdered supplement to it that has some um, epigallocatechins, which are really good for immune function, anti-inflammatory, uh, and has some quercetin in it. So I, so I can have one shake that has a whole lot of power to it. But I will tell you guys, that protein shake, adding a little creatine and alpha ketoglutarate and some phospholipids, like a phospholipid complex to it, you're going to get a lot of cellular health. Remember those amino acids? How do you make peptides? Breaking down some of those amino acids, right? So that, that, that I, I think a whey protein shake is a really useful tool to get a whole lot of protein at one time. And then usually lunch, I have salmon. So salmon, you know, and, and it ends up being about 30 grams of protein of salmon at lunch. And then at dinner, usually I'll have eggs and salmon. And so I try and get another 40 grams of protein in a dinner. And then usually I'll have a little bone broth, bone broth, you can sort of sip on during the day. It's 10 grams of protein for a cup of bone broth. So I can sip on during the day a couple of times. I'll do that instead of coffee. Uh, and, you know, and that's going to be a great thing for, um, for stimulating keto ketones, help my brain function better. Great for my joints, great for my muscles. So that's how I get mine in. And that's why I say, if you're somebody who's trying to eat like the one meal a day or or the three hour, how do you get that protein? I don't think it's feasible. I, I, mean, I guess if you are somebody who can really massively eat that much food in one sitting, but a lot of times you really can't mm -hmm. digest or utilize that much protein at one time. Anyway, you've got to split it out a little bit. Right. So that's how I get my protein. But I will tell you, it is hard. Yes. Uh, so very quickly, L do you take carnosine? Do, do you see carnosine as helping with muscle building? Uh -huh. I, I do think carnosine, I think both carnitine, acetyl L carnitine and mm. car carnosine are beneficial. So okay. I do. Um, yeah. And that's actually in my, my thing that has the quercetin and the epigallocatechin has some carnosine in it as well. So it's a nice, we call it, it comes from our uh, it's OHP health site. It's called everyday immunity, but it's, it's like one little scoop of that has so much power to it. So, um, so that has some carnosine in it. And then, um, and then acetyl L carnitine, I think is really good for, Again, the methyltransferase system for brain health too. So both carnosine, different L-carnosine and acetyl L-carnosine are both beneficial. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so can you tell people where they can come and find out about you? And also you mentioned some education uh, that you provide on the web. So can you talk about where they can find that? Yeah, well, you guys really are missing out if you don't join our so we have something called Human Optimization Academy. 
or HOA. And if you go to bli.academy, you can register. And there's some free content there. And then it's an inexpensive monthly membership. But the monthly membership, we put out, you know, tons and tons and tons of information. And I think different from a lot of some of these learning things that you guys can utilize, I, I have no relationships with any people. I mean, Spermity and I'm on their scientific board because I really actually loved the product and I actually helped bring it to the U.S. But um, but I I don't get paid to promote Spermity and I'm not a paid scientific board member. I'm just there because I really think it's such an important part. So I don't get paid for anything. None of the content I'm putting on there is because somebody's paying me to do it. It's all there based on scientific data. And what I try and do for you guys is find the newest data. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to bridge research and clinical medicine. There is a lot of cool stuff that the researchers are doing. It makes it to the clinical medicine about an average of 17 years later. Mm -hmm. So I work with a sort of a elite group of physicians that our goal is to sort of bring that research stuff when something's safe and effective to clinical practice. So which, what we try and do is educate you guys about the stuff that your doctor is not going to know about for another 15 years, so that you can actually learn about these tools and be able to start implementing them because in 15 years, there's going to be something better. But it really, I, I don't exaggerate. It takes 15 to 17 years before anything actually starts to make it to clinical practice. So by the time your doctor's hearing about it, it is really already outdated. So, so that's really the goal of Human Optimization Academy is to bring that information to you guys so you have some access to it, all based on scientific literature or peer-reviewed literature. So I'm teaching you the way I think doctors should learn, which is from peer-reviewed scientific literature. That's how that's how we teach Human Optimization Academy. We do these Q&As every month, and I'll tell you the members of HOA are really smart people. And so we get, there's, there's a lot of doctors in there too, thank God. But, um, but in general, they're, the, you know, they're doing it for themselves, I think. The, so the key is that the Q and A's are some place that you'll once a month can join in, ask questions. So it's a really cool organization. And I think that it's, there's nothing, nothing like it. And it's inexpensive. So if you go to bli.academy, you'll have access to all that content. But there's also some cool lectures you can watch there just for free, just to sort of introduce you to what's there. So bli.academy, it's really one of my passions. You know, I love seeing patients. But honestly, my passion is that you guys have to learn this stuff. You cannot rely on your doctor to bring it to you. It's not going to happen. I mean, you know, there's just, it, it, it's, it's just... You, you, you know, if you think your doctor is going to tell you this stuff, they're not. I mean, that's not what they're, they, they don't have time to learn it. They don't have time to implement it. And they don't have time to bring it to you. So you've got to, if, you're, if you really want to be healthy, you've got to become the pilot there. You've got to become the guy who's leading the show. So that's what we do with HOA. So BLI.academy is for the Human Optimization Academy. If you're interested in seeing, uh, in seeing us, borderlongevity.com, just fill out a little information sheet and, and somebody will contact you. We see people all over the world, so I'm licensed in pretty much every state, but we we have patients in New Zealand, Australia, Canada, London, Africa. We have patients all over. So, And sometimes, again, the tricky thing there is getting things to those people, but we do our best, and we do give a lot of information and can go over labs with you and help you understand things. Excellent. Thank you. We will link to those uh, in the description. Uh, that sounds really wonderful. So uh, thank you uh, again for joining us today. It's great talking to you. I really appreciate you having me and getting this information out there. Thanks.